Good afternoon and welcome to my class. My name is Maria and today I'm going to be giving an introduction to the MOSFET. Uh, so here is uh, the important thing is we have a device, a transistor, we apply a voltage, we get a current. So the key question is how do we understand what we are seeing? So when we think of a transistor, let's say um, a picture that looks like this, it has three terminals, three leads. So we can think of the transistor in terms of the, the terminal characteristics and we can think of it as a black box. So the way an electrical engineer will draw this is by drawing a black box here and then we have a terminal one and then we have a terminal two and then we have a current that travels between terminal one and terminal two. This current is controlled by a third terminal, either by injecting a voltage, or, I mean injecting a current, or applying a voltage. And then we have a fourth terminal here, which is analogous to the substrate on which the device is built on. And so this is primarily uh, one way to look at the, the transistor. Of course, we can think of it in terms of its input and output characteristics. So. Let's first uh, look at the symbol for the transistor, for a MOSFET. So it's very simple. We have a gate here. We have a source and a drain. And this is our source for drain. And here will be the body. And we can rotate this 90 degrees. And here we can apply a voltage between our source an over gate, which is called VGS, or we can also apply this over drain, a uh, drain to source voltage uh, this way. And this will be our input, and this will be our output. So now that we have established what the symbol for the transistor is, we can look at the ID characteristics or current voltage characteristics. So one of the things uh, to take into account is we can, for example, graph our drain current as a function of our gate to source voltage at a fixed drain to source voltage. And this is called the transfer characteristics. Another way we can graph it is by graphing the drain current as a function of the drain to source voltage at a fixed gate to source voltage. And this is called the output characteristics because we are graphing the output current as a function of the output voltage. So now, if I were to draw my output characteristics here, then what I have is I will draw my y-axis, my drain current. This is my drain to source voltage. And I'm questioning what does my curve look like? So to do so, we can think of two things. First, we can think of a, a resistor, in which case, if we graph a resistor, we apply a voltage here, and we get a current. And we know from Ohm's law that the, the current is proportional to the voltage. So we have I is equal to V over R. This is our current over voltage and we have a linear relation. We also know that the higher the resistance, the lower the current, and the lower the resistance, the, the higher the resistance, the lower the current, and vice versa. And another thing we can think about is a, a voltage control ideal source. In that particular case, when we have an ideal source, we just have a current we apply a voltage and we just have a current and over current uh, looks just like a straight line. It's totally ideal. And so I is equal to I sub zero. So no matter how much we increase the voltage, the current doesn't change. That's the ideal current source. So now going back to my output characteristics, we have a, a region that mimics the, the resistance uh, where the device behaves like a gate voltage control resistor. And then we have another region 
which behaves like the ideal current source. But of course, nothing in real life is ideal. In reality, we have a little less slope here, so I have to account for this slope, and this will be V over R. And so in reality, I get a curve that pretty much looks, it has some slope here, like this. So this will be our linear region, and this is what we call the saturation region. And remember that this is a fixed VGS. So one of the things that we can do is we can sweep our gate to source voltage from a low VGS all the way up to the power supply. And as a result, when I do that, what happens is that I get a family of curves that look like this. And here I am sweeping my VGS, my gate to source voltage. And then we, we still have our linear region, our saturation region, but we also have an emitter right at the knee of these two curves, which we call VD sat. And we can talk about this parameter a little bit more in detail later on. So now that I looked at my output characteristics, I want to see what my transfer characteristics look like. So to do that, I can fix, I can either fix my VDS at a low VDS, let's say here, we we'll call it VDS1, or at a high VDS, which I will call this VDS2. So here I can grab my transfer characteristics, this is my IV versus VGS, and if I make a linear graph here, then I get a curve that looks maybe something like this, if this is my VDS1, or if I'm graphing my fixed VDS2 at a higher voltage, I might get a curve that looks higher, like this, VDS2. So VDS2 is greater than VDS1. And right here we have an important parameter, which is the threshold voltage. And we can also talk more in detail about this one uh, later on. So uh, you can see how we have graphed over output characteristics or transfer characteristics. And now a question you might have is, what are some of the important parameters that we can extract from these curves uh, to find out more about the behavior of a transistor? That's a, that's a good question. So we can take a look at this more in detail. So first, we have talked about uh, how we have swept the gate to source voltage from low all the way up to the power supply. And if you follow this line over here, then one over the slope of this line right here is an important parameter that we call R on, resistance on, and it has units of ohm centimeters. Now, the highest current that we can achieve is this current over here, which we call it I on, and it typically has units of microamps per micrometer. And if we follow this line over here, one over the slope of this line is also another important parameter which we call R out. And it also has units of ohm centimeter. Another parameter is if you look at the difference here between these two curves on the saturation region at a different VGS, this is a parameter that we call the transconductance. And the transconductance has, let, let me, it's G sub M, and it is the change in output current as a change of gate to source voltage. So you can just look at the y axis changing in the, in the drain output, output current per change in VGS. And it typically has units of millisiemens, uh, microsiemens per micrometer, and it is a good indicator of how good amplifier the device is. And so these are some of the main characteristics that we can extract from our output characteristics. Now we are curious what to do with the transfer characteristics, and we have a region here which is uh, leakage current. All of this is the off or leakage current. And 
this is becoming more and more important nowadays as we have scaled down the devices. This leakage current is something that we have to deal with. And so if we want to look at uh, this parameter more in detail, what we can do is we can make a graph in the log scale of our transfer characteristics. So I'm going to draw it over here. And I'm here, I'm going to have my drain current as a function of my gate to source voltage, but on the log scale. So I might get a curve that looks like this, where here is my off current, we call this I off, and somewhere around here we have our threshold voltage, which is easier to see on the linear scale. And then of course I have my on current here, I on, and there is an important parameter which is the slope, one over the slope of this line here, which is called the subthreshold slope or swing, and it typically has units of millivolts per, uh, sorry, it has units of, what does the subthreshold slope have units of? Oh, millivolts per decade. Sorry, I just went into lapses. Because it is, we are trying to answer the question of how many millivolts of voltage, of gate voltage, does it take to change the drain current by a factor of 10? So now suppose that I, this is at my VDS, uh, let's say 0.8 volts. Now I would like to re-graph my uh, same curve, but at a lower VDS let's say 0 0.05 volts. When I do that, I don't get the exact same curve. I get a different curve. So maybe something that looks like this. And you can see how this curve has been translated horizontally across the VGS axis. And the amount of translation is an important parameter that we call DVOL, drain-induced barrier lowering. And it typically has units of millivolts per volt because it is trying to tell us how many millivolts of gate to source voltage have we translated this curve by the change in drain to source voltage. And so this is also an important parameter as well. So now there are uh, two key things and that is uh, what do we use MOSFETs for, for example, right? So one thing that we use in MOSFETs for well, two applications. The first one is as a switch. And as a switch, I just have something that looks like this. I have a voltage. And it's either on or off. It's either 0 or 1 is Boolean. And another application is for analog. So if I have my device like this, I can I can input a signal here and then I amplify my signal over here. And, and also I will mention briefly that we have two flavors of MOSFETs. One is an NMOS and the other one is a PMOS. So in an NMOS, we have a source of electrons on the source, electrons in the drain, and then we have a P-type body. And so we have to apply a positive gate voltage and when we apply a positive gate voltage then we push all the all of the holes that are in the body away from the surface and as we continue applying more and more a positive gate voltage eventually we are attracting electrons to the surface and we form a channel so now the electrons are able to move from the source to the drain so we have inverted, uh, we have made the material from P-type to N-type, and now because the electron has a negative uh, charge, we have a current going this way. Now the PMOS is very similar, but everything reversed. So instead of having electrons in the source and the drain, we just have holes, and our body is made out of N-type. So now we have to apply a negative gate, to gate voltage and when we do that, we push all the electrons away from the surface and to the point that we began to attract the holes 
at the surface, so then we invert the channel from N type to P type, and now we have a path for the force to travel from the source to the drain and out, out the drain this way. So typically we use both NMOS and PMOS in combination. Uh, we call it CMOS complementary MOS technology, and we have an NMOS pair up with a PMOS and vice versa. So there are many different types of transistors like MOSFETs and HEMFETs and lots of types. Um, so thank you very much for your attention. I hope this lecture was instructive to you. And please uh, give me your feedback if I said anything that was incorrect or if you have any questions. Thank you.